Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome to the next part of our Minecraft modding tutorial series for 1.15. In this episode, we're gonna be creating a custom basic armor set and this process is very similar to tools. So if you did okay on that video, then you should be fine here. It's just a lot more values that you need to sort of understand and research before you really make your armor set. Uh, but we can get right into it. So the first thing you wanna do, just like with tools, is we need to create a, a custom material type. Just like tools, every armor set, full set, has a, a material tier that it draws from to get its values, like um, how much damage uh, it reduces, um, the durability and stuff like that. So we need to make one of those and we can come over to our main uh, package here tutorial, right click, new, create a new package and we wanna name this just armor. And uh, just like with tools, this will hold more stuff later on but for now it's just gonna hold our, our tier that we're gonna make. Uh, so inside of your armor uh, package here, you wanna new, Java class and make sure it's an enum, not a class. And in this enum, we're gonna name it mod armor material. Uh, and you'll see why in a second, uh, but add that to the repository. Now, first thing in this class to do is to make sure it implements I armor material. Uh, so uh, what this is doing is getting all of the methods from I armor material, and that's why we're calling it mod armor material, because it's just an extension of the, uh, the interface here. So hover over this red line and make sure you hit implement methods. And that's gonna get all of these methods here that we can hit okay on. And uh, they'll all, um, get set up in the class here. Now we have to set these up ourselves uh, because a lot of them are just gonna return basic values like zero or null. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do right now. Now the first thing we wanna do uh, before we actually you know, set up these values is make sure that they're assigned to variables. So let's create some data members. Um, we can get rid of this uh, semicolon here. So first data member we need is a uh, max damage array. So we can type private, uh, oh, that is not how you spell private, private static, final int array, and this is gonna be named, it's static, so all capitals, uh, max underscore damage underscore array. And we want this to equal a new integer array. And we're actually just gonna add some values in line here. So just create some curly braces. And we want the first value to be 11, the second value to be 16, the third value to be 15, and the last value to be 13. And I will explain what these values mean a little bit later because uh, they're not gonna make much sense now, but essentially each slot in this array is going to um, represent a different armor piece in your set. So I believe, and this could be incorrect, but I believe this is the uh, helmet here, then chest plate, leggings, and then the uh, boots. Um, and each one of these values is going to determine uh, the base level for uh, uh, your durability for those pieces. And we'll be adding some more to that later, so just keep that in mind. But uh, the next value we need is a private final string name. And this is just the name, pretty standard. Um, then we need a private final integer, uh, and we're gonna name this max damage factor. Now, uh, we'll, we'll be setting this later, uh, and these will all be read because uh, we haven't created the constructor yet, but we'll do that later. Um, the max damage factor is going to be essentially multiplied into these values to determine the durability of, uh, of the piece. So that's what that is used for. Next one we need is a private final integer array. And this is gonna be the damage reduction amount array. Uh, you can name it whatever you'd like, but um, I think that's the most clear. And this is essentially going to be um, very similar to this, except instead of durability, it's going to hold um, the uh, the armor slots that each piece gives you. So if you know that little bar above your health bar, the armor slot bar, th this is gonna determine later on um, how many slots in that bar it fills up. Um, we can move on to the next one. So private final int enchantability. Just like last time with our tools, every uh, piece has an enchantability value to get uh, rare enchants. Then we also need, this is different uh, for the first time, I don't think we've ever seen this, private final sound event. And we're just gonna name this sound event. Now this is gonna be um, what determines what sound plays in the game when you equip your armor. So it doesn't have to be the basic armor sound, it can be something crazy if you want, uh, but we can set that later. Uh, next one is gonna be a private final float and we're gonna call this toughness. And this value is going to affect 
uh, this value right here. It's going to essentially uh, take these values up a notch uh, depending on how high you want to set this toughness. It just increases the protection overall. Uh, and you can set this to zero to disable it as well. Uh, and then the last one, I know there's so many data members, but the last one is private, final, and just like with our tools, we need a supplier ingredient, ingredient. Uh, and we're gonna name this repair material, just like last time. And we can make sure to import supplier uh, from java.util.function. And this is gonna uh, essentially be the, uh, just like last time, the material that you use in an anvil to help repair your items. Okay, so now we can make our uh, constructor and we can just call it mod armor material. And this is gonna pass in uh, all of these values except for the static one. Um, so string name, int max damage factor, uh, int array, damage reduction amount array. Uh, we're literally, if you if you are following, just copying these values right here. Um, uh, bear with me, sorry, there's so many. Int enchantability, uh, then I'm gonna make a new line just so you guys can see it on screen. Um, sound event, sound event, comma, floats, toughness, comma, supplier, ingredients, and we're just gonna name that repair material like last time. And then add some curly braces. And last thing we need to do with these data members is just assign them. So uh, again, we're repeating all of this like from the tools episode. This dot name is equal to name. This dot max damage factor is equal to max damage factor and so on and so on. This dot damage reduction amount array is equal to damage reduction amount array. Um, this dot enchantability is equal to enchantability. This dot sound event is equal to sound event. This dot toughness is equal to toughness. And then last one, this dot repair material is equal to repair material. All right, so that should get rid of most of the errors. Um, now we do need to make our enum, but uh, we can do that right now, I think. I guess we'll, we'll come back to these later. Let's do our enum first. So just like with the tools that we made, uh, you're gonna make a new enum type for uh, every, or an enum value, I guess is the correct term, for every single armor set. So for our Ruby set, we're gonna have one enum called Ruby um, that ha affects all of the Ruby uh, armor pieces that we're gonna make. So we're just gonna call this Ruby and we're gonna pass in all the values that we set here pretty much. I know it's a lot, but we gotta get through all of them. So first value name is not just a standard name like uh, the name of your item. It's actually gonna affect um, the name of your layer and we'll talk about layers later, but layers are essentially the um, the texture for what like goes on your body with armor. So you want this to be uh, your tutorial.mod ID. So access your mod ID from your main class and then just add with a plus sign a colon and then the name of your tier here in lowercase. So in my case, it's Ruby. So I'm just gonna put Ruby in lo lowercase. Um, and what this is gonna do, add a comma there. What this is gonna do is make sure, I'll just write it out so you can see it, that the pathway to your layer, which we'll deal with much later on, we haven't even talked about that yet, um, is gonna be uh, Ruby underscore layer underscore one and Ruby underscore layer underscore two. Uh, so it's affecting this value right here. If you wanted, you could make this Ruby underscore armor, uh, and that would make these uh, the path to this Ruby underscore armor underscore layer, but I don't think that's necessary because it is in a folder called armor, so we kind of know it's armor. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it to Ruby. All right, so that's the name, and the next thing we need to do is uh, the max damage factor. Now, again, this is uh, what is multiplied into this array to set the durability. So just for some examples, uh, iron's max damage factor is 15, um, diamonds is 33, we've got gold at seven, and I believe leather is five. So, and, and also chain is the same as iron, it's 15. So uh, what this means, I'll just get out my calculator real quick. Uh, whatever you set here, just for example, let's say, let's take our head, uh, our headpiece, our uh, helmet here. So our helmet has a, a max damage array, a value of 11. So if we set this to 15, um, we can do 11 times 15 to see that our helmet is gonna have a durability of 165. 
So um, that's kind of how you determine what the, the durability is. And we'll do this equation later on with get durability, but uh, just know that that's what this value is doing. And these values don't have to be, these base values don't have to be what I've said here. This is what vanilla Minecraft has, but if you want, you could set them to whatever you'd like. But I would recommend leaving them like this, uh, just so it's it follows vanilla's mechanics. All right, so 15 uh, is the, the iron um, max damage factor. I want mine to be between 15 and 33 because that's between di iron and diamond. So I'm gonna make mine like 25. All right, so uh, the next one we have to do is the damage reduction amount array. This is gonna be an inline array, so new integer array, and we can just instantiate it in the line um, with some curly braces. And we need four values, again, one for each uh, armor piece. So the first piece is gonna be your helmet, and each value in this, like I said before, is gonna be uh, what, how many uh, armor bars you get on your on your character, how, how much your armor protects you. So I'm gonna set uh, the helmet as two, the leggings is the second one. I know it's kind of confusing. You'd think the chest plate would be the second one, but it's actually the leggings. Um, the leggings is gonna be five. I'm gonna make the chest plate six and the boots two. So what this is gonna do is have it be uh, so that if you equipped the ruby helmet, you'll get a single uh, bar of, um, of armor because all these values are gonna be divided by two in the game. So uh, you do, basically all these values divided by two is gonna be what's in the game for your armor uh, protection value. Uh, if I were to equip a chest plate, I would get an armor value of uh, five divided by two, which is like 2.5 or so. So um, I know that's six, but you know, it's close to that number. So um, that's sort of what you're working with here. Uh, for reference, this is the base armor values for um, iron. So, um, and I believe diamond is a just a little bit higher than this for a couple. So um, that's sort of something you can play around with yourself. Uh, next value is the enchantability. Again, this just affects how uh, rare the enchant you can get with your uh, with your items in a, an enchantment table. I'm gonna set mine to 18, um, just so it's a little better than the tools, but it's um, you know pretty similar to what most of the vanilla ones are. I believe diamond is uh, 10 and gold is 22, just for reference. All right, so next is the sound event. I'm gonna make a new line here so that we can see it uh, on screen. So to get a sound event, you want to type sound events dots, and then you'll see all these different sounds. Again, this is the sound that plays when you equip the armor uh, with your, um, uh, your right hand. So let's just make it item underscore, oop, uh, underscore armor equips uh, generic. Armor underscore equipped underscore generic. There we go. So this is just the generic um, item armor equip sound. There are ones for unique types that you can make. Um, and we'll be talking about custom sounds later, but um, for now I would just probably set it to the generic sound. Um, so it's, you know, simple. Uh, now the next one and arguably um, the one that has the most effect on protection is toughness. Now toughness is very confusing at first because uh, at, when I first learned about toughness, I was like, w w what's the point? It doesn't really seem to do much, but it actually is very important. So uh, toughness t basically takes all these values here and just ramps them up another tier. So if we were to set this toughness value to like 2.0 F, uh, what this would do is it wouldn't multiply these values by two, uh, in fact, these are gonna actually remain the same, these values, but the protection you receive from these values is going to um, increase dramatically. So what diamond does is it actually keeps very similar values to what iron has in terms of um, its damage reduction amount array, but its toughness is set to two. Uh, and that's why it's so much better than iron. So I'm gonna set this to zero actually. And by setting it to zero, we can actually disable this um, from our armor uh, and make it so that there is no toughness factor. And just for uh, reference, um, I believe every single item or every single armor set in the game doesn't have or has a toughness of zero or does not have any toughness at all basically, except for diamond and maybe netherite uh, in the new version. Uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind. It's just diamond that really has toughness, I believe. Um, but I'm gonna set mine to zero because I don't want it. Um, and But just know that the higher this number is, the, uh, the more the armor will protect you. And the next uh, and final um, argument to pass in is the repair material. And we can get this um, just like last time uh, with a, a lambda statement. 
so um, make a quick lambda statement there with an arrow and uh, we want two curly braces because we are going to return an ingredient return ingredient dot from items and then we want to get uh, the item that you used for the most part to craft these items so um, registry handler dot ruby dot get and uh, make sure that you add a semicolon at the end of this line as well and a semicolon at the end of this uh, enum. Now, uh, just to sort of clarify what this is doing, this is setting the item that you use to repair in an anvil. In vanilla Minecraft, you can put uh, iron ingots in an anvil to repair iron tools and armor. And what we're setting here is saying you can use rubies uh, for the same purpose for ruby tools. So um, that's what it's doing. I, I did mess up in the last video with tools by saying that you set this to ruby underscore sword. That was incorrect. Uh, Vanilla Minecraft does that for you anyway. So make sure you set this to whatever is like the main uh, ingredient in your crafting recipe for, um, for your, uh, your armor piece. Uh, and same for tools as well. All right, so our enum is actually completely done. So uh, all we have to do now is set these methods. So for durability, we're gonna have to do a little bit of math. It's not too hard, but we do need to multiply the max damage array slot uh, by the max damage factor, just like we talked about earlier. So we can do that by getting the max damage array uh, and then accessing the slot in dot get index. And we wanna multiply this value uh, with a multiply symbol by this dot max damage factor. And again, just one more time to explain what this is doing is multiplying this value right here, this max damage factor, by each corresponding value in this, uh, this array here. All right, so next is the get damage reduction amount. Uh, this is just gonna be this dot uh, damage reduction amount array, and then we're just gonna get the slot index. So slot in dot get index. And now for enchantability, this one's super easy, just this dot enchantability. Uh, you don't even need to add the this, it's just sort of good coding practice, I guess. Um, for sound event or get sound events, uh, same thing, this dot get sound events, um, or I guess just sound events. We don't need to use the method. Um, and then for repair, uh, get repair material, same thing, this dot get repair material or repair material. I keep wanting to say get, uh, don't do that, get the, the variable, uh, and then dot get, uh, because this is, um, we need to get the ingredient. We don't want the supplier. Now for get name, uh, we're gonna do this dot name. And for get toughness, we're just gonna do this dot toughness, just like last time. Okay, and last thing we need to do is make sure that this is only accessed client side. Um, otherwise you might have some issues. So to do that, just add at symbol only in, uh, and then in some parentheses, we want dist dot client and make sure that you uh, import dist um, as well as only in. There we go, so that's gonna make sure we only access this value client side. And now we are actually completely done with our mod armor material class. And remember that if you wanna add new materials here for new armor sets, all you have to do is copy this line right here, paste it down below, change the name to something else like quartz or whatever your new armor set is, and then change all of these values accordingly uh, as you see fit. But yeah, that's it for the uh, the material. So now let's head over to our registry handler class and right below tools, we're gonna make a new section here just called armor. And uh, this is same sort of thing like last time, just a lot of busy work. We're gonna have to make five uh, or sorry, four um, armor items uh, each individually. Um, and it's very similar to what we did with the tools. And you'll notice that this class is getting kind of cramped. If you feel like uh, you have too many objects in this class, feel free to make multiple uh, classes for your items. You could have a full class dedicated to armor, another one to tools. I'm just putting them all in one class so you can see them, but just know that you're totally free to do that. And it's actually preferred, I think. Uh, but let's get started. So public static final registry objects. And again, this is gonna be parameterized around armor item because it is an armor item. And the first one we're gonna make is our ruby underscore helmet. And this is gonna equal items.register. And we're gonna have to pass in the name just like last time. So ruby underscore helmet, uh, a comma, and then a uh, lambda statement with a quick arrow. And I'm just gonna come down to a, a second level here just so it stays on screen. Um, but we need to create a new armor item 
and this is going to pass in three arguments. First one is going to be the material, which is what we just created, and we can access that by typing mod armor material dot, and then you will see all of your uh, armor materials there. Um, for our case, we're using Ruby, so click Ruby, comma, and then the next uh, argument is going to be the uh, the slot type. So this is what type of armor piece it is. So you can access this by doing equipment uh, slot type, equipment slot type dot, and you'll see there's chest, feet, head, and leggings, uh, as well as main hand and off hand. Uh, for now, we're going to be focusing on these four. So first one is going to be head because we are doing a, uh, a helmet here. And that's going to make sure that this piece only is allowed to go in the helmet slot. And then the last uh, argument we need to pass in is just like last time, our group. So new item dot properties dot group. And then we're just going to set it to our tutorial dot tab or whatever your main class and your custom tab is. Or again, I'm just going to repeat this one more time. If you want to do vanilla tabs, you can just do item group dot and then access a vanilla tab. But I'm going to do my custom one. All right, so this uh, Ruby helmet is done. We just need to do this three more times with uh, the three other uh, armor pieces. So let's copy this, paste it below. Uh, let's, it's gonna all gonna be uh, armor items regardless of what type they are. So uh, keep that the same, but we wanna change the name here from Ruby helmet to Ruby chest plate. And then same here, change this to chest plate. And uh, last thing we need to change is the equipment slot type to chest. And then again, uh, repeat the same process, but for legs. So Ruby underscore leggings. And then same here, instead of helmet, we want leggings. And instead of equipment slot type dot head, we want dot uh, legs. And then one final one for the boots, uh, change helmet to boots, change helmet here to boots as well. And of course we change head to feet. All right, so our actual items are done. Now we just need to make the uh, JSONs to uh, assign the texture and then add the textures. Uh, and do bear with me because this is gonna be kind of a long process. There's a lot of stuff to go through. So um, first thing we wanna do, come over to your resources folder, uh, assets, your mod ID, and then go to models. Open that up and open item. Now uh, this, these items are just like regular Minecraft items. So you can actually just copy uh, your Ruby item JSON and rename it. But I did include in the description a link to a paste bin that has um, just you know the JSON. So in case you haven't made an item yet, that's what you can use. Uh, but I'm just going to copy our Ruby item here, ruby.json, paste it in, and just I'm gonna name it Ruby underscore helmet, uh, refactor, and uh, add. And make sure that you change the name here, of course, from Ruby to uh, Ruby underscore helmet. And make sure your mod ID is correct as well. Uh, now we need to do this for uh, pretty much every single uh, armor piece. So copy Ruby helmet, paste, change it to Ruby chest plate, and add. And then again, change helmet to chest plate. Um, and then same thing, paste again change it to leggings, refactor, add, uh, and then change helmet to leggings. And then final one, we have to paste an item and change helmet again to boots, refactor, add, and then finally change helmet to boots. All right, so now we have in our, um, our models.item, we have our Ruby helmet, our Ruby chest plate, Ruby leggings, and Ruby boots. Uh, all four JSONs, and they should all have their corresponding names uh, all correct inside of them. Okay, great. So we can close all of these. File, save all. Now we need to do the textures. So there's two types of textures for um, our armor. We can come to the desktop here, and you'll see that, uh, well, we have the regular uh, item pieces. These are what are, you're gonna see in your hand and your inventory uh, for like the helmet, the chest plate, the leggings, the boots. Um, just standard Minecraft um, items. And you can make these just like you've made every other regular Minecraft item, 16 by 16. The second uh, texture type is gonna be the layers. Now these uh, layers are what you see on your character in game when you equip the armor. And same with uh, mobs, I believe. So this is gonna follow a very special format that you need to keep 
pretty much the same, otherwise it's not gonna work. So, uh, or it will look weird pretty much. So what you can do, if you uh, have never worked with these before, is you can either get them from the uh, base vanilla Minecraft uh, files and just edit them that way, or you can come to the description and I've got two links, one to uh, each uh, imager post that has a, a template here that basically just outlines what you need to color in and the rest will be um, transparent. So just fill in these blank spots with whatever you want and that will be your armor piece in the game. Uh, armor layer one is gonna be the head, chest, and boots. And armor layer two is just gonna be the leggings. I'm pretty sure that's the case. So uh, yeah, in case those are helpful, check those out. And make sure that all of your uh, ruby items here are named, again, exactly the same name that you have here. And you want, uh, this is very important, you want your uh, layer one here, the one with the helmet and the chest plate and the boots. You wanna make sure that's equal to the name that you set in your uh, armor material right here. It has to be this name, underscore, layer, underscore one. And then same thing with this one for the leggings. That name you set, underscore layer, underscore two. Very, very important. So once you have these all created, uh, go to your Minecraft modding folder, tutorial mod source, main resources, assets, tutorial, textures, items. And you wanna drag all of your uh, item textures in and go back to textures. And we wanna create a new folder in here in textures. And you can do this in IntelliJ if you want. Uh, and we wanna name this folder models. And instead of models, we're gonna create another folder called armor. And inside of this folder, so it'll be textures, models, armor, you want to drag in your two layers. And we can see this in IntelliJ if we come back here. Let's go open up textures here. So now we've got items, we've got all of our Ruby items here. And then we've also got our new folder called models and we've got our armor folder here. And inside of there is our two layers, our Ruby layer one and our Ruby layer two. All right, so those are all done. Now all we need to do is set the uh, the language. So open up your lang, ian underscore us.json, and we can just copy one of these items here, add a comma, and create a new entry. Uh, item dot the name of your mod ID, and then of course uh, the name you set, where is it? Right here, ruby underscore helmet. So ruby underscore helmet. And of course we want this to be helmet. And we can just like literally copy and paste this four times and then change it every time. So chest plates, uh, hopefully you're getting used to the rhythm of this. Uh, it's pretty much the same process as making any normal item just with a few extra steps um, and then boots. And we can change the names as well. Chest plates, ruby leggings, and ruby boots. Okay, so we can file, save all. And now if we run the game, we should see our custom armor set inside the game. All right, so we're inside of the game now and we can go to our creative inventory, go to our custom tab, and there are our items, our ruby helmets, ruby chest plate, ruby leggings, and our ruby boots. And we can go to uh, survival mode here, game mode, survival. And we can put on these uh, items just like uh, any regular item. And I don't know if you can hear the sound. Let's turn it up a little bit just in case you can, but if you equip this armor piece, there should be a noise. Hopefully you heard it. If not, uh, not too big of a deal, but it should be working fine, um, the noise. And as you can see, we do have a uh, the exact amount of armor slot pieces uh, above our, our health bar here that we set in the, uh, the code. So it is working perfectly, and we can test it out really quickly by just spawning a spider here, just having it attack us a few times. And you can see it is definitely protecting us um, as much as say, uh, you know, an armor, uh, an iron armor set would. So that is working great and we can just kill the spider. And last thing we wanna test is uh, our armor is a little bit damaged here. We can take it off, go to a uh, anvil here, put one of our pieces in. And if we put some rubies in, you can see that we can repair our armor um, with the rubies. So just like uh, vanilla mechanics, you have a custom armor set now. Really quickly before the video ends, I just wanted to mention that I will be linking another MC Creator wiki article in the description. I know we're not using MC Creator, but this wiki, just like with tools, is so helpful because it really shows all the parameters in one place and gives you some foundational knowledge. So I highly recommend checking these out if you were a little confused when you were trying to make your mod armor material type.
All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot about armor sets and I will see you guys in the next episode.